Okay, so the goal of this video is just to do a quick refresher of, ever, of the main topics that we've discussed so far, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Just wanna make sure everybody's feeling good before we move on to another topic. So I just wanna review some of the key points. So the main things that we focused on so far has been kind of the base data types in R, and then also um, doing basic data wrangling with the tidyverse and with dplyr um, um, specifically. Okay, so let's do a quick review of the base data types, right? So we talked about vectors. Vectors are basically just a one-dimensional uh, array of values, so like a string of numbers or, or a series of numbers, a series of characters, a, se a series of logical booleans, true, false, a series of dates, something like that, right? So to create a vector, so like we'll just do like V1 here, it's just like a list of things. So here we have five numbers stored in a vector. You can see that populates over there. Actually, let me clear this out so we start from scratch. So there's a vector. Again, if you just have one value, that's that's term, that's called a scalar, but that really doesn't matter. Um, they're treated the same, all right? Um, <clears throat> so that's one dimensional. A matrix is basically the same thing, but now we have two dimensions. So something like matrix, um, we'll just use values one through 25. And in call equal to five, and row is equal to five. So that creates a matrix. And then if we just print it down here, we can see it's just these values spread across two dimensions. Um, an array is basically um, just any a multi dimensional array with more than two dimensions, so three or four or five. Again, I mentioned like a a multi-channel image could be like a three-dimensional array where you have a channel's dimension and a column in and row dimension that stored like the pixel values, right? Um, another thing we looked at were um, lists. Lists are basically just things that that store other data types, right? So we could take we could create a list object. It has, for example, let's do v. Now let's do, I don't know, let's just do V1 is equal to V1, M1 is equal to M1, and well, I guess we'll just do that for now, right? So if I run this, create this L1 object, you can see it shows up there. It's a list of two, meaning it holds two items. If we look in there, we have a numeric uh, array of numeric values and a matrix of numeric values, right? So you could have lists that store, you know, to store vectors, matrices, arrays, data frames, other lists, right? So you can just think of it as like a storage container for other objects. Um, to access parts of an array, right, you can do L1 and then dollar sign and then the things that are in it. So we have these two objects, V1 and M1. All right, the main thing we've been using to actually work with real data has been a data frame. Some people confuse that with a matrix. The main difference is that now you can have columns that have different data types. They don't all have to be numeric or, you know, bo or Boolean or, or characters or whatever. Um, so let me just call in some data. I'm just gonna call in the Matt's Movies data set here. So I'm gonna just do that with read.csv and we'll do Matt's Movies.csv. And then I'm just gonna, I want my uh, strings as factors equals true. So it treats all of our strings like factors. All right, so there, now I have a data frame. Again, if I hover over it, it says data frame. If I click on it, it'll open it up so I can see all the records that are stored there. Okay, um, so that's again our kind of our workhorse data type for dealing with data tables. You can think of it as like an Excel spreadsheet or a, a single spreadsheet in an Excel file. Um, we read a lot of tabulated data in this way, you know, for like a comma separated values, uh, for example. Um, a little bit about paths. Um, this confused some people initially, but um, right now I have this R file and it's actually in the same folder as this data set and I opened up the R file by clicking on it in this folder and that sets the current working directory to be this folder. So that's why I don't have to call the full file path. But again, if I had, if this isn't my current working directory, directory, I'd have to either set my working directory or call the full file path. So here I'm just calling my full file path. So again, you, if you're on a Windows machine, you can double up the backslashes or convert them into forward slashes. Oops, what did I do wrong? 
Oops, forgot these. There we go. So that also works. Um, another option is we could do set working directory and then specify the working directory explicitly, which again isn't necessary in this case because this is already the working directory. So that sets the working directory, and then if you use get working directory that'll tell you what the current working directory is. You can see it got ch it changed or set there. So then I could go back here and just call this in with the file name because it's it's assuming it's in the working directory. Okay, um, let's talk for a second about factors. Um, so again, R differentiates factors and, and characters or string based data. So um, the main difference with the factor is that it has a defined number of levels already. So um, there's an explicit set of, of levels. They can be either unordered or they can be ordered. Um, generally, if you don't specify, then they're unordered and they're just gonna show up in alphabetical order, but you can explicitly tell it what the order should be. And that sometimes makes more sense for things that have an explicit order, like grade levels or something, or like you know uh, bronze, silver, gold, something like that. Okay, so since I did strings as factors, if we go over here to this data set, we can see that all the character columns read in as factors. And it says, it says factors, W, so width, and then this is the number of levels. So there are 801 different directors, 852 different movies, um, there are 16 different genres, and then for own, it's either yes or no. Okay, cool. Um, so that's the basics basics for like reading data in um, the, the different data formats, different data types. Um, let's talk a little bit now about some of the, the data wrangling topics that we've been we've been dealing with. Again, you can do data wrangling with base R. You can also do it with with the tidyverse and dplyr. We've mainly been focused on dplyr just because that's kind of the modern way to do it. But you can again do things with base R if you want. Um, so let's just start off and play around with that for a bit, right? So I'm just going to list out here in comments a couple kind of key dplyr and tidyverse um, functions that are important, right? So first off, we have done a lot with the piper, with the piping or forward pipe um, operator, which allows you to, to sequence a chain of, of functions, right? So you generally have an input that gets fed into a function, the output of that function goes into the next function, and so on through the chain, right? So that's specified with percent care, um, carrot or uh, percent. So that's the forward pipe from the Midricker package. But in uh, uh, R version 4.1, they introduced a base R pipe, which is um, you know the horizontal, sorry, horizontal, Oh, I'm clicking the wrong thing. There we go. Oh, that's why, because it's in italics. <laughs> it doesn't look vertical. So anyway, these are actually equivalent. A lot of people are starting to switch to using this since because it's base R and it doesn't require reading in a package or anything. Um, but they functionally do the same thing currently. All right, so we looked a lot at that, the forward pipe. We looked at a lot of um, basic functions for either summarizing or filtering, right? So for example, filter is used to equals um, query rows, so subset out rows based on some criteria. In contrast, there's select, and that's used to subset subset out um, subset out columns. Right. Um, another thing that we looked at was getting some type of results by group as opposed to um, just overall. So that's what group by does. So basically you can group by generally a category or factor level to, and then what happens after that occurs at a group level instead of globally, right? So you can get summary statistics by groups, for example. Um, if you want to get summer, some, if you want to get summary statistics, that is generally done with summarize. So summarize is used to summarize something, right? So you generally feed this some type of summary function. So things like mean, median, standard deviation, min, max, 
so on and so forth, right? Um, you may want to add a column to data, and that's generally done with um, mutate. So mutate, you generally have new column name, and then equals something, right? So it'd be like you know old column times two, for example, to just for some reason store the number multiplied by two in a new column, right? So that effectively adds new columns to to the data. Okay, so let's just play with this for just a couple examples of this real quick with the movies data set again. So let's say, for example, we wanted to get the, I'm trying to think of something that we haven't done. Um, so it would make sense that Matt would probably rate the movies he owns higher than movies that he doesn't because he probably bought it because he liked it, right? So let's see if that actually makes sense, right? So we'll take our movies data frame. We're going to pipe that into group by. So we're going to get whatever happens after this now is going to happen by on a group level instead of globally. And we're going to group on own. And then we want to summarize. And we're going to name our output field. And we're just going to call it mn for mean. And then we'll do mean of my dot rating. Right? And run that. Oops. Oh, see, I didn't call my sorry, I didn't call in my library. So let me do that real quick. So library. Again, we can call in the all the tidyverse with t library tidyverse. You could also just call in like dplyr with library dplyr. So I'm just going to load the entire tidyverse there. So we should have access to everything. Not sure why this is being slow. Oh, there it goes. Cool. Okay, and as I mentioned, sometimes you'll have issues where like things are masked. That means that the name's already being used. Um, there's some type of conflict. And if you want to be explicit, you can always do the name of the package, colon, colon, the function, right? In this case, it's fine, but that would explicitly tell you you're getting the summarized function from dplyr. Okay, cool. So let's run this. There we go. So it looks like his average rating for not not name or not own movies was 6.7 and his average for own was 8.77 so that kind of makes sense right again if you wanted to summarize something differently then or 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 obtain a different summary metric then you just have to change that here so maybe if we wanted the median we could do like md for median and we'll just change this to median and that should give us back the median rating I'm not really sure why this is being so slow. I think it's because I'm recording. <laughs> All right, so numbers are a little different because now we're getting the median as opposed to the mean. Again, um, I'm not saving this to a variable, right? I'm just letting it print to the console. If I wanted to save this result to a variable, then I'd have to set it to a variable, right? So we could do like um, mean uh, for own. Um, um, for own, own. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and again, you can do that with equals for assignment or the backwards arrow for assignment, doesn't matter. So if we run this, then we come over here, we can see we've got this new object. Should pop up here in a second. There we go. So that's the data frame. Technically, it's a tibble, which is a tidyverse data frame that has some additional functionality, but for us, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we did a lot of that um, the last couple of weeks, summarizing things, right? Um, let's just do a couple other quick things. So let's say that we wanted to get a list of movies for a certain director and then just um, uh, print them but sorted from highest ranking to, well, actually, instead of rank, let's do release year. So basically get like our chronological um, order, right? So let's do that. So let's say we were interested in movies from like Spielberg. I'm um, sure there's a good bit of those in there. So we'll do, uh, first we'd have to do a filter, right? Because we need to get just Spielberg movies out. So we'll do director equals, and again, double equals because this is the equals like operator as opposed to variable assignment. Steven. Spielberg. Hopefully I spelled that right. If not, we'll <laughs> fix it. So filter, um, that should filter it out. And then we, we actually, that would actually do it. 
Um, if we wanted, if we just wanted, let's say, the name of the movie and the release, release year, we could do that. So we could do select now because um, uh, we only need, uh, w w because, uh, because we're doing columns now instead of, uh, of rows. So I'm going to do the director, which we don't really need, and then we'll do movie.name and then release.year. And let's see what we get. There we go. So there's all the Steven Spielberg movies, and they're ordered by release year ascending, which is the default. So Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981, and then all the way up to um, AI or artificial intelligence in 2001. So there's been some stuff since there, then obviously, but not on, uh, not in his list. Okay, again, um, just a quick note, if you, get, if you get really long lines, you can break them up. So here I'm just putting returns in after the pipe. Um, and let's do one other thing. So let's say we wanted to get these now in order of, um, well, actually, I'm sorry, this isn't actually in chronological order, right? Because it's actually, uh, I don't know, I guess it's in row order. So to actually get this in chronological order, we would have to add in and arrange, right? And what do we want to arrange on? We want to arrange on release here. There we go, that's chronological order. So 75 Jaws and then Lincoln 2012. Again, not completely up to date. Um, sorry, I messed it up before I didn't put in the range because um, I forgot. <laughs> um, and then what if we wanted in the other order? Well, you can just use the descend function. And then that should reverse the order in descending. Uh, again, you don't have to put ascending because that's the default behavior. So now we go from Lincoln down to Jaws. Okay, um, let's look at a mutate example. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? What could we mutate? Let's say that we wanted to change Matt's rating from a 0 to 10 scale to a 0 to a 100 scale, right? So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to create a new column. So I'm going to take the data frame and we're going to write into it, a, we're going to write a new column into it. So we want to do an assignment. And then we're going to take the data frame and we're going to pipe it into a mutate. All right, and then we want to calculate, let's call it, my, um, let's call it rating two. And we're going to set that equal to my dot rating times 10, right? Because it's on a scale one to 10, so that should put it on a scale one to 100. Cool, so now if we open this up, we can see that we've got the new rating column there now scaled from 0 to 100 as opposed to 0 to 10. Okay, um, let's just talk about some of the things that we went over um, the last in, in the last class uh, where we were dealing with factor levels and whatnot. Okay, so let's do a uh, recoding of factors. So let's say that the own column, let's see what the factor, the current factor levels are. So we'll do levels of M own. So yes, no. So let's say we want to change this so no is not owned and yes is owned, right? So we could do that with our recoding. So this is done with four cats. When we load in Teddyverse, it's loading it. It'll load in four cats for us. So we don't. We should need to do that again. Okay. So let's start this off. So we want to do. Um, we'll just do it in place. So we'll do M owned or own, and we're going to sign back to that. So we want to do factor recode, right? The first argument is the factors that we want to re recode, but we don't need to provide that since we're piping this in. So we should just be able to, to bring in our, um, to start you know, specifying our re-levels. Um, again, if you're not sure about 
what the arguments are. There's a couple options. So you can do, let's just look up this factor recode, because I don't really remember off the top of my head. So again, the help documentation is pretty good, um, so it's, and it's pretty easy to access this stuff online. So as you can see here, um, what, do, what do we need to give it? Well, we, uh, we, it's a name, it's a name character vectors. So basically it's the name of the vector equals the vector itself, where the name gives the new level and the values gives the old level. So new and then old. And you can see what they're doing here, like fruit to apple, so on and so forth. Okay, so I think that should be pretty self-explanatory. Another th way to get help, again, is you can do help, and then we can just put in the name of the function there, and that should open up the help for us over here. So that's the, the documentation. Okay, so I think we know what we need to do, so let's do that. So we basically want our new factor level for no, so um, to be um, not owned, so we'll just put that in quotes since it's got a space in it, so we'll do not owned is equal to no, and then the second factor level here is going to be owned, and then that'll be equal to yes. So if you get an error, uh, an error there, that means that something isn't working. Um, oh, I went away, <laughs> so it's fine. Um, but that generally means there's a syntax error. So let's see if this works. Let's see, it's f must be a factor character vector, not null. So what did I do? Might have something to do with the spaces here. Let's do it without spaces and see if that works. Oh, you know what it is? Sorry. It's because this isn't capitalized, I think. I think that's the only issue. So let's see. Okay, took it. So let's see if that worked. So to check this, we could just again do levels of M and then the own column, and that should tell us. Yep, so it looks like it recoded it for us. Okay, I'm um, trying to think of some other dplyr or tidyverse summary uh, options that are useful. Um, I think that just one other quick one while we have this, and we basically did this already, but if we wanted to get counts, you can do that with count, right? So we could do m and then group by own and then count. And that should give us a count, or effectively the number of rows for each of the types. So 1,638 not owned and 214 are owned. OK, um, I think that covers a lot of the dplyr stuff, um, at least the main things that we're going to continue to use a good bit. Again, if a good place to get help with these is in the cheat sheets. So if we go to help here, cheat sheets, there are a few um, of the common libraries here have cheat sheets linked. So here's dplyr. So this is open up on my other screen here. Wait for it to load. There it goes. Okay, again, so let me zoom into this a bit. So again, this is a good place to go if you want to, you know, just get some basic help. Um, so some of the things that we looked at and are going to use a lot through the course are, th again, like filter, select, we looked at, um, we didn't really do much with slicing, um, um, we did a range, some things we'll use later, things like uh, bind rows, bind columns when we're adding things together. We'll also do some stuff with joins later on, but we haven't really done that yet. Um, so um, anyway, these are a good place to go, right? There's summarize, count, mutate should be here somewhere, mutate. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. And then uh, let's just do uh, an example of our case win that was a little confusing last time, partially my fault because I was not piping stuff into it correctly. So what else could, what could we do? Let's say we wanted to make a column 
that codes the ratings out into like groups as opposed to something that's continuous. So like low rating, high rate, moderate, you know, I guess low, medium, high or something. So let's type out what we want. So let's say that we'll do uh, very low will be equal to anything that's less than like, uh, we'll do like 0.2. And then low will be anything that's basically less than or equal to, or sorry, greater than or equal to 0.2 and less than or equal, less than, uh, what could we do, 0.4. And then we'll do, let's see here, moderate is equal to, so greater than or equal to 0.4 and less than 0.6. Um, I don't know, this, yeah, that's fine. We'll do high, that's probably a little, let's change this a little. Let's do less than four, and then we'll do four to, to six, and here we'll do six to eight. And then for high, we'll do greater than or equal to 0.8 and less than 0.9, and then our very high is um, basically just greater than or equal to 0.9. So basically we want a, oops, let me fix that. We want a column that, differ, that takes those continuous measurements and groups them into these different levels, right? Okay, cool. So let's play with that for a second. All right, so we could do this with like a case win. So let's start that off. So we'll do M. Um, so we'll, and we'll, let's write this into a new column. So, well, we'll do that inside of mutate, but so we're gonna take our data. We're gonna, we're gonna pipe that into mutate. And then we wanna create a new column. So here's our column name. We're gonna call it, uh, let's see here. We'll do rank cat for like rank categories. And then that'll be equal to case win. And then we should be able to specify in here our different cases. So let's go and open up the help here for case win to make sure we know what we're doing. All right, so let's look at the examples here. All right, so we've got a case, so something that has to evaluate true or false, and then if that's true, what it returns, right? And then we have a default there at the bottom. Okay, cool, so I think that'll work. Let me move this over here. So let's start at the low values. So we'll do, we need to use our my.rating field, so we'll do my.rating is, less than or equal to, or so I guess, um, do we wanna do, close it, yeah, it's okay. Do less than 0.4, and if that's true, then we're gonna set that to very low. And then the next case. So again, you should try to avoid typing as much as possible. So I'm just gonna drop in here Each of the each of the cases, and we we'll have to change these now. So we're going to do um, this will now be greater than or equal to 0.4, and then our second condition and my dot rating is less than or less than 0.6. And actually, to save myself more trouble, I'm just going to actually copy that one because that'll be easier than having to add in the uh, the extra the extra query there. So. Now we should just be able to change this 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then the last one would be greater than or equal to 0 0.9, and 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9.
0.9. And very low, low, moderate, high, and very high. Uh, I think that'll work, but there's a lot going. There's could be going on, so there's a good chance there's something wrong. There's no syntax errors, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work. Well, let, so let's see what happens. I took it, so let's see. Okay, so let's open up the um, open up the data frame there, um, and there you go. We've got. Oh, these are all very high. Does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because the way they're ordered from from high to low. Okay, so that makes sense. So just to check, let's see like the distributions. Let's just get a count of each of uh, of the number of movies in each of the different bins that we just created. So we'll do M, and then we want to do group by. And we're going to group by rank cat. And then count. OK, so M group by the rank and then count. Oops, what happened? We got a bunch of very highs, and then everything else is. We got one moderate very high in A. So let's see what we did, or what I did, that caused the problem here. So something didn't work. So we got, let me just real quick check. Look at this real quick. Moderate, very high. OK. All right, so something didn't work. Let's see if we can figure out what the issue, what the issue is. Uh, it might have something to do with brackets. Let's do this. Maybe syntax error because of brackets. See, this is a good example where it worked, but it didn't actually do what I wanted. Let's run this again and see if that fixed it. No. OK. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Oops. Well, that's that's an issue, right? Let's see if that fixed it. I had a, a bad a number there that you know, was out of range. So OK, and let's try that. Interesting. So something's not working. My rating. Oh, I know what I'm doing. This is dumb. So these are on the wrong scale, right? So we want to do this should be four, not point four. All right, point four, and then six, and then six, and then eight, and then eight, and then nine, and then nine. That should fix it. OK. There we go. So there we go. That gave us what we wanted. So it looks like the most common rankings were um, moderate. Um, there's not too many very low, right? But anyway, it doesn't really matter. So that's, that's uh, that. And again, what I was doing wrong there was I, I was thinking they were 0 to 1, but they're 0 to 10, right? So I just had the numbers wrong, but the syntax was basically correct. Except that I had that one run number wrong. OK, right now, if you want to look and see this, it's actually a character. Again, if you want to know the type, you can do it with type and then M and then the name. So rank cat. That should, let's see, type. Could not find type. Or is it type of? I guess type of. 
yeah, there we go. So type of. So it's character. We, let's see if we want to make this a factor. We could do that with this. We could just do some do it in place. So we could do m of rank cat equal to as dot factor. Remember, there's all these as dot functions which basically just convert from between types, say like as dot numeric, as dot character, as dot factor, as dot date, as dot matrix, as dot vector, as dot data frame, so on and so forth. So we'll just do as dot factor of that same column to write it in place. Okay, so now it says it's a factor with five levels, which makes sense because we have five levels here. Let's look at the factor levels again real quick. So let's do levels of rank cat. Oops. Oh, sorry. M <laughs> rank. Yeah, because we got to pull it from the data frame. There we go. So high, low, moderate, very high, very low. So these are in like alphabetic order, which doesn't make sense. We'd probably want to reorder them. So let's see if we figure out how to do that with four cats. Let's see if the cheat sheet's linked. Doesn't look like it. So let's just look online for the cheat sheet. So four cats. And, oh, cheat sheet. Nope, there it is actually. Let's see, do we have like a reorder, a re-level uh, in order? Shuffle. Let's see, reorder. How reorder levels by the relationship with another value. We don't want to do that. Reco, we don't want to do that. Manually reorder factor levels. I think that's what we want to do. So factor re-level. So let's look that up. So factor re-level for cats. Okay, so this is generalization of factor sastry level that allows you to move any number of factors to any location. Okay, either a function or formula of characters, function will call blah blah blah, any level will not mod. Okay, so where should the new factors be placed? Oh, okay, so basically you give it a list of the current factor levels and then you give it in the order that you want them to be in. So that should be pretty simple, I believe. Actually, sorry, this is making the factor. So where are they? So let's see, we're taking the factors. I guess that moves A to the front. Can we just give it the same? J, B, C, B, A. Okay, I think this will work. So let's do it this way. Move this over here. Okay, so we want to reorder this with four cats. So we're going to do, um, let's see, M rank cat. And then we're going to do a factor or four cats re-level. And we'll pipe in our column there and then we want to do uh, let's see the the levels that we the order we want them in so we'll do very low low moderate high and very high Okay, and then just to save some room here, again, I could, if I wanted, just move these down to multiple lines. I tend to like to do things more like um, vertically because I feel like it's more readable. And again, I don't like having long lines. That's what this line is for, by the way. It's their suggestion of when the split um, start to break the lines up. Okay, let's see if this works. It took it. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean it did what we want. Let's call levels on it again here. Okay, that looks like it works. So now we have them in the order that makes sense from very low to very high. Okay, um, I think that covered a lot of the 
base stuff. Um, this is probably all that you really need to worry about. Um, but I did, I want to just take a few minutes, again, it, you don't have to ha watch this if you don't want to, just to kind of go through, the, flip through the modules we've already done, just to kind of point out some of the high points that I think are worth looking at. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, so remember the introduction module was um, just kind of showing you how to, like giving you kind of the lay of the land. Um, the, this module was just setting up R and R Studio, which is pretty easy. In terms of the R language part one, we I went over um, pretty much all of this in class. So this covered like the different data types, the data models, factors, reading in data, and then some like of the really common functions that you'll see used in R a lot. So like way down here at the bottom, we have um, you know a lot of the list of these really common functions like in column, which gives you the number of columns, in rows gives you the number of rows. Length is the length of a vector. R bind and C bind are for binding rows and columns, like merging stuff. We get our set working directory, get working directory, um, sample for doing random sampling, um, so on and so forth, right? Um, so we covered a lot of that, both you read through it, hopefully, and I talked about it. So I hope you feel comfortable with the base R stuff. Okay, and then this is the main um, module that we've been working on. So again, this gets into data wrangling. The first part is using base R, which I didn't talk about in class, and we, you don't necessarily really have to use. We did this with tidyverse, but if you're interested, the first part of this talks about using data wrangling and doing data wrangling with base R. Um, there's also discussion here of like here's your different logical operators, right? So like and or not equal to equal to all your all your comparison operators, right? Um, yeah, so this is doing sub data subsetting and selection with base R. Um, here's some stuff with like using na names of columns for doing selections. Subset is kind of a replacement for filter um, in base R. Um, dropping rows and columns, recoding stuff. Again, this was all there just so you could kind of see how stuff is done in base R, but we focused on dplyr. So this was talking about piping, and we went through, again, a lot of this. So we talked about how to do summarization. We talked about how to get counts of things. Um, we did some mutation. Transmute, I didn't do. Basically, it's mutate, but it removes the, the columns that you're using to create the new column. So you could, for example, create this new column here and then get rid of these two columns. Um, I tend to not do that I just because you're, it gets rid of columns that you may end up needing later. But it's nice if you want to kind of like tidy up and get rid of some columns and merge them into something more meaningful. We talked about sampling with sample in and sample fraction. Sample in, you give it a number of things you want to sample. Sample fraction, you give it the fraction or proportion, so zero to one, basically. Replace equals false means it's random sampling with replacement, so you could actually sample the same row multiple times. Replace equals true, sorry, I said that backwards. Replace equals false is random sampling without replacement, so you can't double sample a row. And if it's set equal true, it's random sampling with replacement, so you could sample row multiple times. Again, you could do stratified random sampling by just adding in group by, so you'll get now 15 samples per subregion in this case. Um, we haven't done much of this yet, but we will later um, when we talk about data manipulation. So binding rows is used to um, basically take rows from multiple data frames and merge them into one data frame. So if you have like 100 rows in one data frame and 50 rows in another, you can merge them into a data set with 150 rows. Bind columns is kind of the same, but for columns. So you have the same records or same rows, but they have different columns in those tables. So if you have like 10 columns in one table with 100 rows and uh, uh, about 12 different 12 different columns in a new table with the same rows, then you could bind them with a table with 22 rows. The key thing with that is it assumes that they're in the same order. If you're not sure if they're in the same order, then you can do, actually do a join. With joins, you actually specify a field that tells you what 
rows are equivalent and that they don't have to be in the same order. So this is similar to the concept of like a primary key and a foreign key in a database. We're doing a table join um, if you're a, you know, a GIS user like an ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so that's kind of what we've mainly been focusing on. Again, this working with factors and strings, that was more of a um, just a short module that got into some of the stuff we did this week with string manipulation and factor manipulation, right? So detecting whether whether there's a, a, um, a specific series of, of letters in a, in a larger string, um, getting the length of a string, um, converting things uppercase, lowercase, and then some stuff working with factors like reordering factor levels, counting the number of records per factor level, so on and so forth. So that's a pretty short one. Um, we're going to get into our language part two next time. That's going to be our next focus. Our focus. Just as a side note, we we're not going to really do much with the data summarization and statistics because I feel like that overlaps with a lot of stuff that you do in other classes. My plan t is to talk about this a little bit um, this week, but. If you are reading through there, it talks about, again, data summarization, kind of a review of that with, with dplyr, base r, and then some other packages. Um, and then it talks about doing some basic statistics. So things like a t-test or an ANOVA, pairwise comparisons, um, testing assumptions of tests and whatnot. Okay, um, and then lastly, you should feel hopefully comfortable with rendering out Quarto files, again, this, um, this uh, 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 gets into talking about R Markdown and, and Cordo and rendering and whatnot. Um, it's actually, again, pretty simple. Okay, so just looking forward for the next few weeks, the, what we're going to get into, um, what we're going to get into next week is this R language part two. So we're going to learn about doing control flow with if, if else statements. We're going to learn about creating functions. Um, to make your code a little bit more reusable. And then we're going to look at doing loops. Um, so for loops and while wow loops. So the kind of the basic function of, uh, components of the, of the R coding language. Um, and then once we're done with that next week, we're going to kind of transition into doing data visualization with ggplot, which is one of my favorite parts of the class. And then we'll get into spatial data after that. Okay, so again, the whole point of this was just to give you guys a quick overview of kind of where we are. Um, I felt like things didn't go great last week, so I just wanted to um, reiterate a few things um, if you felt like this would be, and hopefully this would be helpful. Um, and uh, anyway, so, all right, so um, that's it again, and hopefully this was helpful. If not, um, I guess uh, you feel free to ask me questions or stop by. All right, thanks.